Okay, so I received this really interesting question from our friend Cassia. Cassia wants to know whether trauma can pass down to the next generation. And if so, what can we do about it? Let me ask you this first. Have you ever felt like you're carrying stuff that isn't even yours? Like patterns, fears, or a deep pain that doesn't make sense, but somehow it feels familiar? Well, here's the thing. Sometimes they aren't ours. Trauma, stress, and even emotional wounds can actually be passed down through generations. And the more we learn about neuroscience and neuropsychology, the more we understand how to answer better to these questions. Because some years ago, these questions, the answer to those questions, we thought that were things that only lived in our heads. But let's break this down. How does this even happen? what's going on in our brains and bodies, and most importantly, if trauma is being passed down, how can we stop it? Alright, so first let's talk about genes and epigenetics. Genes are like the blueprint of your body. They contain the instructions for building everything from your eye color to your brain chemistry. They're made up of DNA and passed down from our parents. These instructions don't really change unless there's a mutation down the generations. Epigenetics, on the other hand, is like the software that controls how those genes get expressed. Think of it like a light switch. Epigenetic markers can turn genes on or off based on environmental factors like stress, diet, trauma, or even early childhood experiences. So, while your genes provide the raw material Epigenetics determines how that material gets used in response to life experiences. And the fascinating part, some of these epigenetic changes can be passed down to future generations. To make it even simpler, think of it like this. Your DNA, your genes, are like the hardware of your body. But your experiences, they're like software updates. And trauma, well, it can actually change how some of those updates get installed. Basically, when someone goes through extreme stress, like war, abuse, neglect, it can leave marks on their genes, and those marks get passed down. It's like your body going, hey, life is rough. Let's stay on high alert, just in case. Robert Sapolsky explains it like this. If a kid grows up in a chaotic and predictable environment, their brain rewires itself for survival. Stress hormones stay high. The nervous system stays on edge. And there you have it. You've got a body and a brain that expect danger even when there isn't any. And if you want to break it down even further, early experiences in childhood are the ones who shape the way your nervous system wires itself. A childhood filled with unpredictability or neglect can leave the amygdala, your brain's fear center, on high alert while suppressing the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain uh, that is responsible for rational thought and emotional regulation. And the fascinating part is that this isn't just about you, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents. If they live through something extreme, that stress response might have been passed right down the line. This means that if trauma isn't addressed, it doesn't just live in memory. It embeds itself in the body's stress response. And when it does, it doesn't need to be remembered to be repeated. Okay, neuroscience is amazing and it gives us lots of information, but let's see the other aspect of this question, because this isn't just about genes and epigenetics. It's also about the way we are raised. Gabor Mate says that trauma isn't only the bad things that happen to you, but also the good things that didn't happen to you, like the love, safety, or validation you didn't get. Let's say your parents went through some serious struggles. Maybe they were not emotionally available. Maybe they had their own trauma and they passed down those same patterns to you. Not because they wanted to, but because they never knew any different. And that's how this cycle keeps going. No one sits down and says, hey, let me pass down my unresolved trauma onto my kids. It just happens. Because pain that isn't healed gets repeated. When a mother, for example, is struggling with her own unresolved trauma. She's unable to emotionally attune to her child, and then that child learns that emotions aren't safe. This becomes a generational script. It's like a silent inheritance that teaches suppression, disconnection, and cycles of dysfunction. 
And so here's the big question. What can we do about this? The first step is to take responsibility and own it. Not in a way that it's your fault, but in a way that you have the power to change it. It starts with recognizing the patterns. It starts with articulating your past, understanding what shaped you so you can reshape yourself. Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Basically, if you don't become aware of the stuff that's running in the background, it will keep running your life and you will think it's your fate, your personality, the circumstances, whatever. But here's the key, to not judge yourself for the ways you've been affected, but understanding where they come from so you can start making different choices. See, our brain is always rewiring, meaning whatever patterns you inherited, whether it's fear, anxiety, emotional shutdown, you can reprogram them. It takes intention, it takes therapy to break the old habits because these things literally change your brain. And most importantly, environment matters. You cannot just think your way out of trauma and especially intergenerational trauma. You have to change your surroundings, the people you interact with, the way you respond to stress. So yeah, trauma can be passed down, but so can healing. You're not just a product of your past. You are the beginning of something new. And if this hit home for you, share it with someone who needs to hear it. Hit like and subscribe to my channel if you like this video. And always remember to ask yourself, what is that within me that makes me do the things I do. Send me your questions and see you in the next one.